Okay, I think it's babysitting time. I was feeling lonely again, so I guess this Saturday is time for us to meet. So what can I tell you? I need a bowl. Let's get a nice bowl. Let's make sure it's washed. I kind of hand wash this stuff, but sometimes I just want to be sure for my own health. So hey, it's Saturday. It's 3 o'clock. This is Peter's Kitchen. I'm Peter in Peter's Kitchen. And I'm doing a live show. A live show. I don't normally do live shows on this channel. I do have another channel where I do live shows. But it's not on this channel. So seeing how there's nobody in here, I guess if you watch this on a repeat uh, or you watch the tape of this later after whatever they call it, Leave a comment. I like comments from you guys. I know you're all over the world, right? So I like comments from you. So what's on today's agenda? On today's agenda is, again, Saturday, nobody in sight. I looked all the way to that side. I looked all the way to that side and there isn't a person around. Is there anybody out there? Anybody out there that, that maybe you need some company too? Well, if I keep you company, will you keep me company? Just a little tiny bit? Okay. So now we will do my weigh-in. I just weighed myself same way every time. I weigh myself with no clothes. That allows me to look and see also about the flab here. Now I've lost 40, almost 45 pounds. So I weighed in at 159. So I'm actually Oh, uh, one pound higher. What the heck is up with that? One, pint, one pound higher. Well, you know, water goes up. Hi, Charles. I see you there. Where are you? Where are you? Um, I know Charles is always all over the place. You guys could see people that make comments is over on the right side of my video, and I could see them also. Okay, so that's why I will point out that Charles is here. The great and mighty Oz. No, well, not quite. Okay. How about doctor? <laughs> doctor Charles? All right. So I have on the agenda today, I kind of slept late. I got involved in a movie last night. And what a wonderful feel-good movie. I mean, I wasn't expecting it. I did see it before, but it's been so long that uh, I didn't remember most of it. Hey, Confiton, Confiton, you are here with me. You are not alone. Thank you, Jesus. I am not alone. Okay. It's bad. On a Saturday is when you finish your week and you feel like, ah, oh, I can let my hair down. I can do what I want. And then I look around and there's nobody here. People are at work. It's Saturday. Tonight, I might be going to my brother's house for dinner which I absolutely love. Uh, Charles says he's cooking uh, a Cuban chicken uh, guisado in my RV. You, you kind of like taking up to that RV stuff, uh, uh, RV stuff. Okay, so um, I was telling you about the movie I watched and I, I wasn't planning. I did a live show last night on my other channel. I could stop drying my hands, but I do want to make sure this bowl is dry. Um, and it was Secondhand Lions. I think that's the name of it. And I was, I kind of knew I saw it before. I didn't realize it. I actually had questions while I was watching the movie. So I was like, maybe not paying attention the first time. But last night, it hit the spot. It actually hit the spot. Charles is asking, what movie did you see? So we're on the same wavelength, right? So let's call it Secondhand Lions. Now, the interesting thing is, it was free on YouTube. All you got to do is go to YouTube, put in secondhand, one word, lions, and it should have uh, two guys and a boy in the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, in the thumbnail. So it's about two old, fairly old geezers, okay, set in their ways, country guys, if you draw uh, 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 the rumor on the street is they hit it rich somehow. 
So I'm not going to give away the movie unless you want me to. Um, and uh, it, it caused a everlasting stream of salespeople coming out to his farm. So to get to the house, you've got to go up this long dirt road. As the cars were come up, you would see a, 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 a dust trail coming. So they would be sitting there on their uh, a porch. The house looks like it's ready to fall apart, all wood. Big old porch, rocking chairs or sitting chairs. And they would just shoot. They never hit them, okay? But they would just shoot at the salespeople because it's like, uh, it was basically like, we heard you got a lot of money. We came to sell you something. That kind of a deal, okay? And that was their entertainment. So um, he had a niece that has a son and she basically wanted to get rid of the boy because it was cramping her style her dating she was a very loose woman so she dropped the lady off i'm, I'm sorry she dropped uh her son which was basically their nephew okay off and said uh, i have to go to school which was all a lie okay uh can you keep the boy here and they said no we don't want no kids here we just go away okay so the movie went on from there and it got into all kinds of wonderful storytelling and from the storytelling it got into um, uh, you could you didn't know whether to believe the stories or not they they were kind of over the top but what a good movie so let's get moving jeff jeff from brisbane is here good morning from brisbane just popped in before he was getting up to go to the bathroom. That's what, because what is it? It would be like five or six o'clock in the morning. Why are you up so early on a Saturday? What is wrong with, oh, maybe it's Sunday for you. Well, why are you, up, why are you up so early on a Sunday? So where is Jeff? Let me put up his, so you guys know uh, who he is. This is Jeff, a magic moment photography. This a magic moment. Da, 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 la, da, da. No singing, Peter. That's for the other channel. We, I actually have a singing mic on the other channel. All right, so let's get down to business. There's a couple of things. My weigh-in. Okay, I actually was very good this week, but I actually gained a pound. So I went from 158 to 159. But it could be water, agua. And I have been drinking uh, water. And I have been doing uh, exercise, okay? Now, the exercise that I'm doing is, to me, it feels like low level, it doesn't do anything exercise. But let me tell you something, it's working, okay? So I have a, a person um, who actually helps me, and like I have a, a coach that helps me with my nutrition. I have a doctor, Dr. Charles Richard, right there, you guys can see, look at the chats, okay? So Charles Richard, and I have, a, what do you call it, a exercise coach. I don't know, they has, there must be a name for them, okay? So uh, I am fighting a hernia, so I don't want to wind up in the hospital. So there's a lot of exercises I can't do. So he picked out two exercises for me, and I'm going like, he's got to be kidding. These exercises are for like 10-year-olds, 5-year-olds, okay? So I have to walk for five minutes on my treadmill or more. And I do use that as my prayer time because it's timed five minutes or more. OK, so it lets me also get in five minutes of my prayer uh, session with the Lord every morning when I do that. Now, I just did that like a half hour ago. OK, so uh, walking. Oh, but there is one thing with the walking. Uh, I'm supposed to take fairly decent sized strides. Fine. It actually feels like I'm walking slower. Okay. So, uh, but I have to suck in my gut the whole time. Like I'm just clenching, not my butt, but my tummy. Okay. So he said, pretend like there's, you're trying to push your belly button out through your spine. Okay. Make it really, really contract. And I'll tell you what, it causes you to, um, your posture, it changes you to good posture by doing that. It also works 
all the muscles from your chest down to your knees, which I didn't believe, but I could feel it. And I could tell during the day that many times as I'm actually uh, uh, just doing like right now, I could feel my belly automatically contract, like I'm maybe training it to pull in tight. So this is basically, that has the effect of doing sit-ups, in my opinion, okay? He didn't say this, okay? In my opinion, this has the effect of doing sit-ups without doing the sit-ups, which could hurt the herniated section, because if you tear the hernia or, or something to that effect, it could be a, an, a, an emergency trip to the hospital, okay? No effect, no pain. I don't even feel it down in the hernia area. So that's the first exercise. Incredibly simple, right? Walk, but suck in. He calls it the vacuum, okay? Suck in your stomach the whole time, but do breathe because when you suck in your stomach, you have a tendency to not breathe, all right? So I do that and believe it or not, I'm a slight bit winded. Now for the you guys that wanna know how lame the exercise is, I'm only walking at 1.3 miles per hour, which is kind of like this, okay? It's not a heck of a lot of walk, but you do, I, you, I'm, I do it now basically seven to nine minutes, okay? So the first five minutes, I'm kind of in a warm up, but it gives me, a, you know, whatever it is, seven to nine minutes of prayer time. I'm a Christian guy, in case you haven't figured that out, all right? So you don't have to be a Christian guy. You don't have to be anything. You could be what you want, but I get to be what I want. <laughs> it's not a one-way street. So that's when I get to do my praying. I do my praying, right? Confiton, all right? I get to do my praying when I actually uh, use that as a timer because I like to have like a minimum amount of prayer. Okay, so the second thing, I've done my walk, right? I feel slightly winded, to be honest with you, and I feel a little bit, yeah, I knew I do, I knew I did a little bit of exercise. So now the second one that he has me doing is even less of a man's exercise. You know, a man's exercise, we like that. Nope, this is another one that he was very careful to exercise as many as the groups uh, that are, I don't even know the names of them but I do know one of them is my butt, okay? And I'm not being sassy or silly, which I love to do anyway, okay? I'm a guy, all right? But your, your glute muscles are one of the largest sets of muscles, and when they get exercised, it's actually taking up energy. So he has me do what he calls the sit-stand. So I sit in a seat, okay? You're gonna laugh, I was laughing, uh, I'm going to sit in a seat and I'm to actually spread my legs just a little bit so I'm comfortable, okay? And I'm supposed to go from a sitting position to standing. That's one. Sitting position to standing. That's two. And I have to do 20 of those. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I have got... Uh, exercises for wusses going on here. But today was my sixth day. Five plus one is six. So today was my sixth, T-H, S-I-X-T-H, sixth day of doing them. And I walk around now during the day and my gut pulls a little bit, like it tightens. So that's kind of like a self-induced exercise. And I'm going like, interesting now this is like all right so i'm exercising and i don't even realize that i'm exercising now so like right now i'm standing if i purposely relax my tummy it it's belly out okay this is what i look like from the side okay but then it'll pull in you can see my chest go up or down a little bit and it'll do it all by its by itself so he basically has got my body trained to be doing an automatic exercise, which I didn't even realize. And then the other thing is when I do the sit stands, 20 of them, uh, I can actually, I thought all your muscles, it actually works your butt muscles, your your thighs, your calves. Uh, actually, I could feel my, my, uh, my belly tightening up. 
Okay, um, I, I don't think it does anything for the shoulders. Uh, maybe because I'm balancing myself so I don't fall over, but that's not much, okay. Um, but I felt it all the way from my hips to my knees, the front side of my thighs. Did you know there's muscles there? Honest to God, I thought all the muscles were on the back, you know, from the back of your thighs up into your butt, and I'm sit, stand, sit, stand, sit, stand, and I figured that's what I'm exercising. But the last two, maybe three days, it's like, OMG, oh dear Lord Jesus, okay? I could feel it right on the front, like my lap. Those muscles came alive. And they were saying, Peter, we're here, and we're going to give you some P-A-I-N. Yes, my muscles can spell. <laughs> so I, I have a little, so I'm actually thinking of taking an Advil, but hey, I'm a big boy now. This is my birthday month. So on October 13th, I became, you got it, 69 years old. So that is the weigh-in. I didn't lose any weight. But I must have toned something up, right? I haven't, my, the hernia hasn't even said boo. So this guy targeted it perfectly. This coach, my, my workout coach, yeah, that's a good idea. That's his name, workout coach, okay? So my WC, all right, the big boy, he's 27, 28 years old. And he knows a lot about muscle groups and all that than I do, all right? So... I've actually been training for six days. <laughs> it's almost like a joke. So Charles is, um, Jeff is heading off to Fraser Island. Um, you can listen to me in the car on station Peter's Kitchen. <laughs> but don't text and drive, okay? And Charles says, yes, I'm cooking. I'm looking there because that's where my monitor is, where I could read the, the comments. I am cooking in my RV because... I'm camping at the uh, Waikiva Springs Campground, awesome beach. Yay, now that's what you should do on a Saturday is get out. All right, so let's get down to business. I told you my way in. I actually gained a pound, but I did drink a couple of glasses of water this morning. I'm not making excuses, uh, but I kept to my eating regimen, which is a keto, carnivore, and I'll, I'm going to tell you and teach you a new term called flooding, F-L-O-O-D-I-N-G. Flooding, I'm sure has other terms, but that is what I'm calling it. So first thing, cravings. What do I do with cravings? The number one thing I crave is a dessert. That would be ice cream. That would be pudding. That would be pie, cheesecake. Those things are out because I am eating smart. I'm not eating with willpower because willpower always makes me lose, okay? My willpower comes on strong. It's kind of like sex. You come on strong and then you're exhausted, okay? And then you give in, all right? So the, with the willpower, the willpower I always lose because I could do willpower for a, quite a while and then bam, it knocks me down. However, what doesn't allow me to get knocked down is knowledge, smarts, everyday street smarts. But they're not street smart because the people don't use the, these kind of street smarts. So sugar, regular sugar, which this is not, okay, uh, actually is a poison to the body. Why is it a poison? Is it poisonous itself? No, I don't think so. We eat it, all right? but it causes reaction, causes reaction. So I'm, I'm a Greek guy and I live in a Latin community. So it's a double header. I got the Greek desserts and then I've got the Latin, or I call them the Cuban desserts, flan and, and the Cuban coffees, cafe con leche, which is a little bit of coffee with a lot of sugar and milk. <laughs> and then what's the other one? Uh, I forgot the name of it. It's a, it's a coffee with a lot of sugar. It's at a, almost like an espresso. Um, and it, it just it's packs a wallop for uh, getting your metabolism up. There's a name. It's a very famous name. They got them on all these little windows all over Miami here. So uh, the, these sugars cause my liver to put out 
stuff, insulin, okay? And the cells react to it. But just like the boy that cried wolf, you do that often enough and your cells no longer, I'm pulling my pants up because they're falling down. But nothing you can see, don't get excited, okay? So the insulin gets pumped out every time I put a little more sugar. Chocolate chip cookie, uh, liver goes insulin. Pancreas does whatever it does. The gallbladder does whatever it does. You do that often enough and your body starts to ignore it. And that's called insulin resistance. Now, I'm not a doctor like Charles is, okay? However, I have been doing me some learning, okay? Cortadillo, nope, not that. It's another form, it's a very black, very, very, it's in a, and they put it in an espresso machine um, and it comes out like a foam. Uh, and then they give you these little bitty cups with a, a thing like that, maybe it's a pint or a half pint. And then everybody is like, hey, you want some? And they put it in a cup that's like one swallow. Okay, I don't know why I have a problem remembering it. It's the most famous coffee in Miami, okay? But anyway, so pounding with the sugars between the Greek desserts and the Cuban desserts, and I've been doing this, I turned 69 for 67 years, okay? I'm sure during the first two years of my life, I must have eaten healthier. Colada, thank you, Charles. Colada, colada. Bada, 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 bum. All right, so anyway, the point is the sugars make your bodies respond in a way that is bad for the actual organs, and then other things don't participate, uh, and it causes the plaque to go into your arteries. So it's healthy eating versus Peter is trying to lose weight. So I do the healthy eating, and with the healthy eating, I actually... I'm getting thinner. It's like a side benefit. Here's, here's gravy on top, okay? And no, I don't do gravy. Well, yes, I do, okay. So I need a dessert. I need multiple desserts. So I have conquered the bread. You're not allowed to have bread. I'm allowed to have on the keto version up to 20 carbs, and I'm supposed to count the carbs, okay, which is basically your sugars. So um, I have created a pancake that's about that thick, Am I close up? Now, let's go to this camera. The pancake is, where are you? It's about that thick, okay? And it's, it's when I say pancake, it really is a pancake, okay? Now, because it's that thick, I can eat it as a pancake, all right? Uh, I use a lot of butter. I like Kelly Gold, Kerry Gold. Um, and almost no, no syrup, but I have found a... Um, a syrup that's okay to use, okay? So if I slice it in thirds, I got bread. So now I could toast my pancake and make it a bread for a hamburger, okay? Uh, I can also use it when I make my eggs because I like, uh, I like the, uh, the whites firm, but I like the egg, the yolks runny. But what do you do with all that yolk in the plate? Okay, that's... <laughs> Not a very polite way to eat the, the, the yolks. So I slice it, like I said, my pancake, and I can actually have three pancakes out of it. I can make uh, hamburger buns. I can have uh, toast. If I put, put it in the toaster, uh, the three slices, I can have toast, and it's all the same piece. So I conquered the Peter can have no bread and pancakes every once in a while problem, and it's keto. Very, very low in carbs, about... The whole pancake has got maybe about 9 or 10 carbs, which I'm allowed 20, okay? So that solves breakfast and dinner, okay? So then the other thing is I need a dessert. I need ice cream. I need chocolate pudding, you know? Well, I've conquered chocolate pudding, and I've conquered ice cream. When I say conquered, you could get a gazillion recipes online, but they all suck, honestly, okay? So thank you for being here with me today. It makes it so my afternoon is not so lonely. So um, I conquered that. And how about cake? All right. So I love, I love like a regular chocolate cake, but there's recipes. I haven't tried them, but I have made cheesecake. I'm going to make cheesecake right now. So I'm going to take a block of cream cheese. All right. And if you take it out the night before, it'll be soft. Well, I forgot, so I put this in the microwave 
So now it's soft, okay? So let's bring this over here. This is soft. I can put, I can put the fork in here and it's soft. That looks overexposed. Let's go over here. Okay. That is overexposed. So let's fix, let's fix the overexposure here. We'll go to the Sony. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So let's lock it in there. So I'm at ISO 320 for memory's sake. Okay. So this is a ZB1, a Sony ZB1. So I put it in the microwave for 20 seconds twice and I've got me some soft cream cheese. Okay. So now we'll go over to the bowl and that sucker looks overexposed too. Can you fix that, Peter? Why, yes, I can. I can come right over here. I can go to my ISO mode and I can lower the ISO to 320. Whoa, that's too much. Okay, let's go to 640. Now let's look at the whites with the 640. Still kind of bright. Okay, let's go down to the, let's go down to 400. Okay. That's better. How does that look to everybody? Doesn't matter. I'm leaving it there. Okay. So we're at ISO 320, uh, no, 400 here. So I'm going to take the cream cheese and I'm going to put it in a bowl. Whoa. Does that take talent or what? But I'm going to arrive at a version of a, 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 like a cheesecake pudding. Okay. So how do I get all this off of here? I guess I'll have to lick the bowl later. All right, so now I'm going to smash that down. So it's nice and soft. If you do this hard, you're just, you're defeating yourself. So this is regular uh, Philadelphia. Where is it? The, the regular cream cheese, okay? That's what that is. An eight ounce block. Okay. Now I'm going to get Truvia. Um, I like Truvia because it doesn't have that horrible, it has some. I'm going to put one, two heaping teaspoons, plus a little bit less, okay, in the bowl. I'm going to use a fork. I'm going to stir this up. Not much, because I'm going to have to come back and stir it up again. So why do double the work, okay? Okay, so now I'm going to get cinnamon. Not the good cinnamon, but the bad cinnamon. Okay, regular cinnamon, which is supposed to be bad for you. They have a cinnamon called Cylon cinnamon, which is supposed to be the good stuff. Now I'm gonna open this up kind of like to the salt shaker mode. Okay, and then I'm going to start from one end and go across to the other and just put cinnamon, come on. There we go, right across the whole thing. Kind of like I just salted it with salt, but I didn't salt it with salt. I salted it with this cinnamon, okay? Which is, it's a Latin brand, Badia, all right? But it works. So I'm gonna put that cinnamon on there, and then I'm going to grab the bowl, and I'm going to start a stirring motion. I don't want to fold it in, I want it to mix in. So I'm now mixing in the, uh, the sugar, the fake sugar, okay, the Truvia, and I'm mixing in the cinnamon, okay? So once I get that all mixed up, or as the fancy chefs try to say, incorporated, I mean, geez, why do you have to come up with such big words? Can you see it okay? I can always switch over to the other camera. Yeah, let's switch over there. This way you could watch that I'm actually a good stirring person. I could stir it up. There you go. Get that cinnamon mixed in there. Try to keep it all in the bowl. Okay. So what am I going to do next? Next, I'm going to actually give this two good squirts of lemon juice. I use this. I find this lemon juice 
to be better taste, better tasting than any other lemon juice. So I'm going to give it one, two, and an extra dribble. Okay. Then we're going to go back and start our stirring action again. Get the lemon juice mixed in. And one more step, actually two more steps, but one more step that you actually have to do, okay, and you are, you basically got a cheesecake pudding. It tastes just like freaking cheesecake. I'm not kidding. And that is to take something, what is this stuff called? I don't know. What do you think that stuff is? Okay, I'm sure it's something. Oh, Daisy sour cream. And I'm going to take one heaping teaspoon. And when I say heaping, I mean heaping. Two, nope, oh, got to get that on there. Two heaping teaspoons. And now I'm going to stir in the sour cream. First, I'm going to pat it down because I don't want no splashing. Okay. Now I'm going to, well, I guess you could call this a folding action. I'm going to stir it in. Stir it up. Boom, boom. Remember that from what's, what was the 70s or the 80s? Stir it up or steer it up. I'm just going to steer it up. Okay. Uh, let's get in nice and close. You can see what that looks like. Where is close? Jeez. Nothing like aiming the camera in the right spot. I want that to be the spot. Let's go over. There you go, big boy. What's with this reaching of the arm all the way out there? So now I'm going to stir this up. And basically, I have a cheesecake pudding. This tastes totally identical to a good cheesecake. Not a great one, because a great one has eggs in it, and I'm not putting eggs in here. Okay, so I'm going to do some quick stirring. I used to use a whisk, but I don't any longer. And the reason I don't use the whisk is because it takes too much of my pudding or my cheesecake. And there you go. Okay, so let me show you. Jeff says, Peter, I hear you, I hear you regarding the simple yet hard exercise. Due to my disability, uh, like you, what I thought was easy found after 45 minutes of exercise with uh, physiotherapy, I can feel it. Yes. Okay, so I'm getting, I'm going to the refrigerator. You watch nobody steals that cheesecake pudding now, okay? Okay, so now, I made this yesterday. And I purposely didn't need it. Now look at the consistency of this one. It's like a little bit like a thick pudding, right? Now you put that in the refrigerator and look what happens. Basically it becomes a paste. So this is kind of like a cheesecake paste. So that is what you got going on. And overnight that will thicken right up and become uh, a cheesecake uh, paste. So I'm not sure, but I think I got a message. $90 for two minutes. No, 20 minutes of exercise. I'm not sure. Do you think that sounds wholesome? I don't think so. So let us just block that call. Okay. We don't want that crap coming here. All right. So that's the difference between this one, which I can actually turn upside down, and this one, which I dare not turn upside down. It's actually pouring out already. So overnight in the refrigerator, and you find like two, three, four teaspoons of this. Let's taste this one. It's my bowl, so it, there's no double dip. Cheesecake! Oh my God! It's cheesecake! This one somebody else might eat, so I'll do. Now, this is the one that has not firmed up. Cheesecake. It tastes just like that one, but this is very much more soupy. Okay, so overnight or put it in the fridge. I don't know, I got this thing about stirring it up. And this is going to become a paste. Now, if you could figure out 
some way to present this as a dessert in little cups or something because remember the cheesecake usually has a graham cracker crust and I don't have a graham cracker crust. I've got just the pudding part which I'm going to eat plenty of. Okay, let me put that back in the fridge. I want that to stay firm, firm, firm till her daddy takes her T-bird away. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, so I made the cheesecake. How hard was that? Honestly, a block of cream cheese, two heaping teaspoons of sour cream, uh, two regular teaspoons of chuvia or your non-sugar sweetener of choice. You can pick whatever you like. Um, a squirt of lemon juice and a sprinkling of cinnamon. Stir it up, put in the refrigerator so it stiffens like a nice cheesecake, and you've got yourself a killer dessert, okay? Now, I haven't had breakfast or lunch, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend my time with you And close this up and I'm going to make my daily smoothie okay so I start with a Vitamix voila Vitamixi okay Vitamix is this is a Vitamix from the Vitamix company okay I'm going to start with water how much water a lot I'm going to use I would say six uh, 18 to 18 ounces of water. So this is part of what I said at the beginning. So you can't see me because I'm over the refrigerator. So either I'm peeing or I'm filling the cup with water and I'll tell you when my cup runneth over. Okay, so that's three quarters of a stadium cup. A stadium cup is 32 ounces. You know, when you go to 7-Eleven and you get those uh, really big size drinks, this is a 32 ounce and I filled it up to about here. So three quarters of 32 ounces. I would say we're over 20 ounces there, okay? So since this is my uh, first smoothie of the day, I'm going to put my, my vitamins, okay? Because I don't like pills. So I put almost all of them in with my smoothie. So I'm going to put vitamin K2, K2, done. Now I'm going to put a vitamin a milk thistle. Let's turn this around so you could see it. I'll put it in the front and I'll go to the wider view so you can see what there we go. Okay, so one capsule of milk thistle. And no, I don't know. So you have a, some type of a disability that keeps, uh, lets you know your exercises really, really are exercises, right? I, I can feel it. I can feel what you're feeling. All right, now I'm going to take a combo vitamin, which is 100 milligrams of zinc. Um, and a thousand milligrams of vitamin C and 5,000 international units or I use of uh, D3. Okay, so this one needs to get coaxed to get the stuff out of it. So I just tap on the side and all of a sudden the white powder, the cops came in now, they would want to know what's all that white powder, Peter? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, so I've got uh, zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D3, vitamin K2, vitamin milk thistle. So those are the vitamins that I use. I also put in uh, two to three drops of oil of oregano. That's the 19 killer for you guys that know what I'm talking about. Think of what is popular these days with uh, the number 19 in it, okay? So that does that. Now, there's a couple of other things that I do add. Let me get them over here. 
I'm over here, don't worry, okay? Don't get excited. It's okay. And I'll explain to you what I'm putting in. I'm not going to leave you all left out in the cold. This is my spoon all the way up to a tablespoon. So for the tablespoon, I'm going to use uh, MCT oil. MCT oil basically keeps me so that I don't feel hungry and I want to have the munchies. Did I open this yet? No, I have to, this is a new bottle. So let's unscrew the top. Let's pull the protective cap off. Put this back on. What was I saying? I'm going to use a tablespoon of MCT oil. There it is. Okay, and let's see. This is a different brand. With, uh, one tablespoon. Okay, so we got a tablespoon of MCT oil. Now, I do like my smoothies a little bit thicker, kind of like uh, reminding me of a milkshake. So I'm going to use something called Guire gum. I did look it up. And it's got pros and cons. So on the cons is it ain't no good for you. Okay. On the pros, it's actually healthy for you. So I figured if we're in the middle, we're, we're okay. Okay. So I'm also going after the guire gum. I'm going to add the same measurement, uh, but I'm going, to, I'm going to take it as a monk fruit extract. So let me show this to you because... This is true monk fruit. It's in the container that I emptied out over here. So uh, let me talk to my brother later. All right, so uh, this is monk fruit straight, not with anything else. And that's what it looks like. And I'm gonna give it a nice heaping teaspoon. Okay, so what else am I missing? Ah, another very important ingredient. I need some fat in here. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of the fat and add it right into... That's coconut milk. So I'm going to add that right to... I'm going to put two tablespoons of the... This is the fat. Okay. Let me give you a wider view so you can see. That's tablespoon number one, tablespoon number two, and I've got everything in here now except my protein powder. Okay, so we're working on the protein powder. Okay, so remember you're watching live Peter's Kitchen and uh, the last time I used a chocolate one, today I'm going to use a vanilla one. And I'm going to add a little bone broth in with it. So this first one is going to be... Uh, i got to show it to you. There we go. This is a Keto Science Meal Shake. Okay. This has got wonderful, wonderful flavor. And I'm going to take it one nice big heaping scoop except the scoop goes back in <laughs> okay and then I'm also going to oh I got a couple of comments on there Peter when you have the time can you explain how you use the uh, chance an ionizer behind you. Is that a purifier or is it a water purifier? So I'm going to take one scoop of this, which is a bone broth. They're both very low in calories and little to no carbs. The carbohydrates here is four, uh, and that's for one scoop. The carbohydrates here is three. So our carbohydrates are still doing very good. So I'm going to put those back. But before I put them back, let's get, it's right here in front of me. Let's get this mixing because I, I want those vitamins to melt in. So I'm going to put this on the Vitamix. I'm going to put it to number five. Okay, so did I show you this one? 
This is the bone broth powder. If you want links to this stuff, I'll put it in the description below. Okay. So Jeff is asking, what is MCT oil? MCT oil is a more refined version of coconut oil, and it's a tri, it's a uh, some kind of a triglyceride. Uh, it's actually supposed to be not good for you, but excellent for you. But I use it because it makes me completely not hungry. I could have this shake now, and I am totally not hungry. All right. So the last step to making my morning smoothie clear some of this out so I have some some room okay so we'll put this over here this over here uh, since you asked Jeff here's the MCT oil that I use okay, so that is also I got from Amazon so it's a hundred percent organic uh, coconut and it actually gives you energy it, uh, Whatever part of you that feels, makes you feel full, this addresses that and gives you a very healthy way to do it. Not very, but extremely healthy way to do it. So let's put the coconut in the fridge and I'm going to get some ice cubes, okay? So you're going to hear that. And... Here's the ice cubes. So now it won't sound like I'm peeing. What does that sound like? Sounds like ice cubes. So I'm gonna get me about a half a cup, a half of the stadium cup. So maybe eight ounces or maybe a little more of ice cubes. So this needs to go into the into the blender. And then I'm gonna probably have to be quiet because this is gonna be really no noisy for a whole minute. So here we go. So that's what MCT oil is, Jeff. And now this is going to give me a smoothie that is amazing in taste. Now I can add a little bit of uh, Hershey's, it's too far over to get it, Hershey's uh, cocoa powder. And that's got like one uh, carbohydrate in it. So it's, it's got really no problem. Okay, let me set this up so when I pour it, you guys can watch. Okay, let's put the vitamins over here. Sour cream needs to go in the fridge. Okay, so let me get, let me stir this just for a second. Okay, so overhead camera. This is what it looks like inside, okay? So it's frothy and bubbly. And this is what it looks like when I pour it. There's no lumps, it's smooth as silk. And this is what it looks like when I taste it. <laughs> it's, uh, borderline sweet, it's thick, and it's uh, very, very tasty. And it's got all my vitamins. It's got the 19 killer in there, and it's got zinc and all that stuff. You saw it a little bit, a little while ago. Okay, so that's about it. Thank you for keeping me company, almost an hour. We've been on 50 minutes. And it's just a Saturday get-together to have my breakfast. Now, one, one Saturday when we get together, I might do eggs or, have, or make one of my pancakes. But for Saturdays, when I'm going to my brother's house for dinner, I usually have a smoothie. Oh, I did not explain what flooding is. It's a term that I came up with. Now that I had some, I, I need, uh, I'm hungry. Mm. Boy, is that good. That's crazy that that's healthy, okay? 
So flooding is my normal eating habits for the last 67 years. I'm 69 now, so since I've been able to put food into my mouth. Uh, because I've been uh, starting, I guess, at 10 years old and older. Chubby. I'm a chubby kid. All right. I've always been heavy, embarrassed of my weight, made me shy, and all the good stuff that goes with being a little bit on the chubby side. So I actually... Where is my mouse? There it is. Oh, Jeff says, thank you. It's good to know. See, I have my hands free of the food now, so I could put that up. Okay, so uh, I've always been chubby. So I have been trained by my own eating habits to eat less because you're fat. Okay, I mean, let's call what it is. You're fat, eat less. Even my grandmother that fed everybody in the whole city of, of, or the state of Virginia and, and New York City, which is where we're actually from, okay? She would be piling mashed potatoes on my plate until it's higher than my eyes while she was saying, the poor boy, he's so heavy. You have to do something to help him lose weight. And the mashed potatoes were getting poured and poured and, you know, the grandmothers can't help but feed you. So I'm into portion control. I'm into eating less. I'm into trying to eat healthy, which I found out was not healthy at all, like oatmeal. Isn't oatmeal healthy for you? Hello? Well, no, it's not. <laughs> not if you're going to follow the research that I've done. Oatmeal does nothing good for you, except it is a broom to help sweep out your intestines, which is a healthy thing to do. But everything else it does to your organs, your heart, your kidneys, your, oh, what, I don't know what's in there. The doctor would have to explain it for us, okay, is not positive. It's negative. So uh, for me, eating healthy was eating the wrong stuff and not eating healthy was like a trip to Dunkin' Donuts or Krispy Kreme or a Dairy Queen. Now that, oh, when I get to heaven, I hope there's a huge Dairy Queen up there. Even better, I hope the Telemook ice cream. Tillamook is the name of a county in Oregon. Tillamook. Telesol, Tillamook. Okay. And they make the best ice cream. So if you have the opportunity to check out Tillamook ice cream, yes, have some. All right. So flooding is when I overeat on purpose to fill me up and make me so satiated, meaning I feel so satisfied that I don't have to eat for a long time. Like it's three o'clock, four o'clock. I don't have to eat till dinner time tonight, which for Greek families around eight o'clock. Okay. So um, that's what the MCT oil helps to do. But you notice the size of this guy, 32 ounces, and then there's more in here. So by the time I drink this, I will feel bloated. I call that flooding. I'm going to flood my stomach system to where, oh my God, that feels so good. I'm so full and I'm eating healthy and I'm eating almost very, no car very low carbs or no carbs, proteins, vitamins, uh, 19 killer, and it's all in here and it's thick. This is vanilla. I could have put some chocolate powder in there and made a chocolate. Mmm. Let's do the got milk commercial. <laughs> that feels silly. I'm looking at myself on the monitor over there. So that's what flooding is. So I flood myself twice a day. I have two of these. One for breakfast, where I put all the vitamins, and one at night when I don't put any vitamins. And that allows me to feel full all day long and then at dinner I have a little bit of meat now that's one way and I revolve through these okay so I'll do two days of flooding only and no other food one 32 to 40 ounce smoothie in the morning one 32 to 40 ounce smoothie at night that's it no more then for two days I have that then I will go from my flooding uh, into keto now, I still do flooding in the morning, okay, 
but then for dinner I have a keto dinner. Keto means meat, heavy meats and fats, okay, with uh, uh, very selected vegetables, okay, and I can even have a little bit of strawberry, so that's keto. So I do two days of keto, and then I do two days of carnivore. No flooding, nothing else uh, but a ribeye steak for breakfast and a chuck roast for dinner, okay? So that's two days of carnivore. So I didn't stick myself with one type of diet. And then on the final day, okay, I eat uh, a little bit of flooding, a little bit of food, and I get a cheesecake pudding, okay? This is gonna thicken up so nicely that you're not gonna believe it. And it also satisfy me. So that's probably Sunday or possibly today, okay? So I will have uh, keto loosely, all right? I'll even go above the 20, but not by much, maybe 30, all right? I'll have a dessert, I'll have ice cream or chocolate pudding, uh, or that's when I'll have a hamburger with, uh, with the pancakes as the buns. And then starting Monday, we are two days of flooding. Then two days of keto, but it starts off with a flood. So I have learned how to feel bloated or very satisfied all day. And I'm losing and dripping weight off me. Not like crazy, like I lost 10 pounds in a week. Send me $40 and I'll teach you how to do that. No, 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 no. You're going to lose, you know, 10 or 12 pounds in a month or maybe even longer. But you're going to be eating healthy. So your, your arteries are going to clear out. Your liver is going to be so much healthier. Your insulin levels is going to come down. Your blood sugar readings, your A1C readings going to come way down. Your cholesterol is going to go way up. Your doctor's going to have a fit. He's going to cry like a baby and try to stuff all these pills down your mouth or stick them up your rant, whatever. What's down there? However, don't listen to your doctor. He's not up to date. He's not wrong. That's what they used to do. But it's not that anymore. So uh, he'll get your cholesterol reading and it'll be like, whoa! What the hell happened here? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Your HDL went up, which is the cholesterol that's very, very helpful. Your LDL went up, which is still a good cholesterol. Okay, contrary to good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, your LDL is actually a good cholesterol. Except, and here's the kicker, if it's actually damaged LDL cholesterol, that is actually a bad cholesterol okay so let's say let's play follow the bouncing ball okay here's the bouncing ball so follow my finger okay my finger goes like that and goes down like that and then it runs off like that okay now pretend i did that on a piece of paper kind of like making a chart so i'm going to go up it's going to spike then it's going to come down and it's going to lay really low all right now that's good ldl that's what the chart should look like. Yes, they can test this, okay? Uh, it costs too much, so they don't, okay? So the bad LDL, the one that got damaged, it looks like this on my little finger chart. It goes like this, it goes up, it spikes, then it comes a little, then spikes again. Then comes a little down and spikes again. Comes a little more down and spikes right up to the top again. So it's kind of like a wave cycle. That is damaged LDL. The body doesn't know what to do with it. So guess what? It hides it under the lining of your arteries. Okay? Because this is not LDL like it's in your brain. Okay? And in the rest of your body that uses cholesterol. This is damaged LDL cholesterol. It is dangerous. It will cause heart attacks, strokes, and other stuff. But they don't test for the good undamaged LDL versus the damaged LDL. So what are you supposed to do? Okay, well here's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get a number and that is taking your, tri there's three parts to your cholesterol readings, taking the triglycerides, 
taking the HDL and dividing the triglycerides, or no, dividing the HDL by the triglycerides. And that will give you a ratio. And the ratio needs to be at five or under. So when, before I started, and I haven't had a blood test re, uh, recently, I was at uh, almost nine. Those are very dangerous cholesterol levels. Now, if the next test, if my uh, triglycerides to HDL uh, ratio is five or under, that is the new thing that doctors are using to read. Are you setting yourself up for a heart attack? Are you setting yourself up for a stroke? Now, that doesn't mean you won't have one. There could be other things. You could just ask the good doctor that's in here. Hi, Sammy. I see you. I see you, Sammy. How's the big boy doing? What kind of weather you got up in Jersey, huh, big boy? So that ratio number, okay? So if you didn't get it and you find what I'm saying is interesting, just Google it. Triglycerides to HDL ratio. There's a gazillion articles that'll tell you how to do the dividing, which is take the one and divide it by the other. Big deal, okay? And that becomes whether the main yardstick as to whether you are at risk for a heart attack, a stroke, or other deadly diseases that can disable you, okay? It's the triglyceride HDL level. Now, they don't need to do that if they actually test to see if your LDLs are healthy or if they're damaged. But for most of us, let's face it, for all of you that are watching, you're not doing low carbs. You're not doing uh, uh, making your body burn fat instead of sugars. You're feeding, just like I did, so I'm not blaming you, you're feeding your body crazy amounts of sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. And then when you feel weak, you need more sugar. Mm. My smoothie is really good. Okay, so I've shared with you some of the very basic foundations of what I have learned. Exercise, very mild, where it feels like this is an exercise for wusses, sissy boys, okay? But no, I've completed six days and I'm sore from two extremely simple exercises, which I explained a little earlier. And then I am low sugar. I am taking and letting my metabolism level out, letting my sugar levels come down. And the gravy, the bonus to the whole shebang is I'm getting healthier. Now imagine starting this at 18 years old, okay? Well, an 18 year old boy or girl still has to have his treats so what did we make today? We made a cheesecake pudding. I could teach you how to make chocolate pudding that's, oh my God, better than you're gonna get from anywhere else. I don't mean, okay, we'll settle and have this chocolate pudding. Oh, yeah, it tastes like crap, but you know, you, you gotta get yourself healthy. No, this is chocolate pudding where you wanna eat up the whole freaking bowl all by yourself, all right? And then, uh, the, the carnivore, where you go a couple of days a week. Now, this will help you lose weight. It also actually relieves uh, your, your liver so uh, and pancreas and kidneys and your bladder, uh, all that good stuff. And for the males, we have a prostate that actually, uh, as you get older, which I've learned, get, is, gets enlarged, so you want to reduce the enlargement. Well, the carnivore helps you it's not a miracle pill. You're still going to die, okay? I'm still going to die unless the rapture happens, all right? So, uh, but we can live healthier and happier and not have to, you know, do, uh, or what do you call it, uh, deal with a lot of illnesses that weren't necessary. Now, some of us are genetically uh, wired to where it's going to go wrong. And in that case, you, they still, they started the carnivore diet for epilepsy in the 50s and the 60s, okay? So by reducing or eliminating the sugar, it greatly reduced the epileptic attacks. So it does have its basis in medicine. And I mean, you see these well-meaning people come in and they say, uh, it'll cause scurvy, where's your vitamin C? Oh, I know, it's in this bottle, <laughs> okay? So that is what you got. 
And uh, hi, Sammy. Yeah, I congratulated you Friday night that you hit a thousand. I wanted to give you a big hug and tickle you for about a minute until you were squealing because you hit that milestone. High five, big thumbs up, Sammy. So Sammy Superstar's got his own channel, in case you haven't visited. That's Sammy. Uh, and see where it's in gold? Sammy is in gold right there. That's his channel. He's uh, 17 or 18 years old, and he's on fire for YouTube content making. And that's who Sammy is. So he's become a good friend of mine. I think of him as uh, like a very special friend. Let's see. Uh, let's, I, I, I updated this eCam. And... Okay, so yeah, I have it set so that the, uh, the comments that you see on the bottom of your screen where Sammy or somebody else's will go away after two minutes so I don't have to uh, uh, worry about erasing them. So that's what we did today. We've been on for an hour. Thank you for keeping me company. Uh, Confitan, you were here. Jeff is here. Uh, Charles is here. Um, who else? Uh, well, it says we had six people, so uh, I guess we have some lurkers that were too shy to come in and say hi. That's okay. I'll only make fun of you for a little bit. You'll survive. You're a big boy now. You're a big girl now. Okay. So thank you for being here with me. If you're watching this or you do watch this, uh, where you you, the, you can't put uh, chats any longer, you can put comments down underneath the video. So leave me a comment and say hi. So um, it was great checking in and I need to go. Uh, I'm going now too. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, all Sammy, I will check out your channel. There you go, Sammy. See, by saying hi, people will come and check out your, your channel. I love all of you guys. I pray for you guys every day. And I thank you for keeping me company today. Leave a comment in the comment section when you watch this later, okay? And that's about it. I ran out of words. Bye. <laughs>